Hey, this is Sky. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Let's talk about confrontations, but I want to talk about arguing with women. That's a tough one. Guys don't really know how to argue with women properly. Guys know how to argue with other guys because there's rules of confrontation from the beginning all the way to the end. There's rules that we were taught. There's unwritten rules that we know, that we learn, at least most guys. I don't know if the younger generations the Millennials and the Generation Z are being taught the proper way to have confrontations even with other men. The reason why I think that is because you see a lot of younger men becoming overly emotional and I saw this with my generation that people wanted to skip over the natural progression that goes from attitude all the way to fight. There's a, a few steps in between from flexing an attitude on somebody to where you want to fight them. People in my generation seem to want to, go, want to fight everybody. Maybe it was the frustration because of the world that we were raised into, because of not having fathers. The Generation X were really the first fatherless generation. The baby boomers were horrible, horrible parents <laughs> for the most part. Not all, obviously. You may have had good parents. But they created a generation of divorce. The previous generations hadn't seen divorce like the baby boomers. Baby boomers all got married at a young age and got divorced. Almost every baby boomer man that I know, woman too, they, they've been married multiple times. My father was married six times. My mother, mother has been married two or three times. The whole generation is that way. My grandparents' generation married once. My grandpa grandfather met his high school sweetheart, you know, and married her. And they were married up until she died. My grandmother, up until my grandmother died, you know. So that was that generation. I bet you your grandparents didn't have multiple marriages. This created a generation of boys just like me out in the streets who didn't have fathers, who were emotional brats, babies. Didn't, we're, we weren't taught the resiliency uh, that manhood uh, comes along with manhood, of being able to handle storms, to be able to have tough skin, both physically and mentally. A lot of us out in the streets without fathers latched on to a comic book version, a fantasy of what manhood was. An idea of strength that didn't really exist in the real world. Because we didn't have it at home, we didn't have it to any, any men to show us what strength was. So a lot of us puffed our chest out, picked up pistols, and created these personas, these ego-driven personas for ourselves. It's pure weakness. There's a lot of people in my generation who for whatever reason, gave up on tradition. Tradition of confrontation. There's a tradition to confrontation. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, let's get into it. Here are the stages of confrontation, for those of you that don't know. Now, before I get into this, it's important to keep in mind where I started I think it's very important for us to, as men, for us to not only be aware of these stages, which I'm going to go through, but to understand when you argue with women that there is not going to be a natural progression through these stages because the way that women are emotionally, the way that they have developed evolutionary, uh, if, they interact with each other in different ways. Women argue with each other in different ways. So when a man argues with a woman, he can't argue with her like he argues with his buddies. This may be obvious to some emotionally mature men, but it is not obvious to a lot of men. There's a lot of really abusive men out there. And one of the reasons why men slip into patterns of abuse, there's many reasons, but one of the reasons is because of this failure to understand the stages of confrontation and particularly a failure to understand that women are not going to follow you through these stages and cannot follow you through these stages because they're women. Now let's get into it. The 
the stages of confrontation. I didn't make this up. This is classical psychology. I wrote this down. I may have missed some points. So let's just go through it. If I missed anything, feel free to correct me. Most all confrontations, I'm going to talk of confrontations between men. Confrontations between men usually start with attitude. You flex an attitude, I flex an attitude, somebody, it's usually one-sided. That attitude can often start with very little posturing, body movements, a, a comment. And we may decide, well, I don't really like this guy. <laughs> and he may decide the same thing about us. Something about that motherfucker rubs, rubs me the wrong way. And we can become very short with these people, very short-tempered, very uh, not very forgiving. And this attitude, one-sided or both-sided attitude, you know, both could be flexing attitudes on each other. It's common. You see this in workplaces. You see this on the playground. You see this any place on teams. There's just two guys on the team that just don't get along for some reason. It could be two guys on a subway train that are just staring at each other, just like, fuck you. <laughs> then the attitude, if, because at each stage you have an opportunity to, to walk away or to not engage, but the attitude, if you engage with somebody for too many times, it becomes an argument. And you may know how this works. You flex an attitude at your, at your job with somebody. There's some coworker that you just don't like. You do your best. You guys have your little comments and remarks and, you know, uh, you kind of ignore each other for the most part. But you know, you can feel the vibe. You know you don't like him. You know he doesn't like you. And you also know, you may talk about it to others, to your friends, to your inner circle. You know that one of these days, it this is going to blow up. One of these days, this mother I'm going to fucking go at it with this guy. I can just feel it. You ever had that before where you just know, you just know that at some point, maybe, maybe tomorrow, maybe next year, but at some point, me and this guy are going to be going at it. That builds into an argument. The argument is destined to happen at that point. You're looking for it. Both people are looking for a fight. We're kind of getting to this point with politics, right versus left, they're, they're, they're both looking for a fight. They, they, they want it. They're, they're itching, both sides are itching for it, flexing major attitudes. So then we have our blowout, we have our argument. We go from attitude to argument. The argument can escalate arguments typically between men start off rationally trying to understand behavior trying to express our point our needs our boundaries those types of things if that message doesn't get across and both people are still pretty gung-ho pretty dug in with their perspective sides with their beliefs or their opinions, then that argument goes to, from rationality to a, a full-on blow-up. Screaming and yelling, nose to nose, insults. There's no longer a debate. You, you guys are no longer professors debating a topic. Now you're street thugs throwing insults. Fuck you, motherfucker. And in that, uh, when you get to that stage, to the, to the actual blow-up, it's still not a fight. It's not a fist fight yet, but that's coming because you guys are posturing. You're in each other's space. There may be this, oh, you know, uh, don't push up on me. And you push the guy back. And every man pretty much knows this progression. Now, at that point, when you're in the blow up stage, when it's just a full on confrontation, and you guys have lost your minds, you haven't physically fought yet. But that's coming. And you may have been this way with someone at a bar or on the street or with your father or stepfather. You know, we've all been, all men have been through these stages. You have the choice to settle it 
or you have the choice to escalate it, which is to fight, and that's the next. So you can, you, you go through the first three stages, and then you can either settle it, and settling it is a whole separate category, because settling a fight could be walking away, agreeing to disagree, just as a self-preservation thing, saying, okay, this is social positioning, you're the alpha, and you're tougher than me, and I don't want no trouble. I'm just going to go to the other side of the room or go somewhere else. That, that's all versions of settling it. You can concede. Hey, you know, you, you have a good point. Sorry I brought this up or whatever. There, there's all kinds of ways to settle a dispute. But if you, if, if you can't settle it or if you're not interested, then you can escalate it. And that's the fourth stage is the fight when you guys are throwing blows. people nowadays, they skip over these stages and they go right from attitude to the first stage. Then skip the, the argument and the blow up and they go right to the fight. Not even seeing the settling option because ego often clouds that pathway. We can't even see that path. We can't see that exit. That's always an exit. Along any stage of the, the, the progression of confrontations, in any stage of confrontation, you have an option to settle it. But you have to be looking for that, for that exit on the highway. It's going to come quick. After you guys have fought, you've knocked his teeth out and broke his nose and given him a black eye and all of that good stuff. Proved your point. Because isn't that what a fight is? A fight is proving your point. The old school rules were that after you beat me up and you, you, you showed me what for. You would extend a hand. This is part of confrontation. This is one of the stages of confrontation. This is the fifth stage. To extend the hand and help your opponent, your enemy, help him up. This is a calculated stage that was put in by our parents and forefathers. The reason why you extend the hand is because this is an acknowledgement by both parties that I was right, you were wrong, I win, you lose. This is now squashed. We could have settled it through in any of the other stages. But you wanted to take it this far, this is what happens, and now it's squashed. I just squashed it. This beef is over. Completely over. If you Knock me down, good. I'm on the ground. You got the best of me. One of these just classic Mike Tyson punches, and I go down, and you're, you know, st still standing like, yeah, motherfucker. And you extend that hand. All right. You see, Sky. You see. You run your mouth, motherfucker. You see what happens, and you extend your hand to me. And I'm on the ground, and I'm bloodied up, missing my tooth. You knocked my tooth. These are two fake teeth, anyways. But you knocked them out. If I slap your hand away, well, we have to go back to the beginning now. You didn't learn your lesson. You're, you're being a bitch. The other people watching will see that man, will see me on the ground, slap your hand away and say, ah, Sky. Well, you didn't learn your lesson. You want some more? We know this progression. Once you help that man up, you guys can be friends if you want to be. You don't have to be, but it's over. My generation fucked all this shit up, man. And I can see why millennials and Gen Z are fucking it up too. They want to skip over all this shit and then when they lose a fight, they want to go and kill somebody. I can't tell you how many times I've seen motherfuckers lose a fight and they go back to their car and get a gun. Can't you just take an ass whooping? Be aware of these stages of confrontation and understand that you uh, can't argue with women who throw stones at you, who throw insults at you, who are combative and uh, going to take it to the streets, so to speak, because a man doesn't understand that. Because we have these natural progressions and you start calling me some dickless chump, we're going to fight. 
<laughs> says, nobody talks to me that way. That's a fight. That, that, that's, a, that's a challenge to a fight. And you get involved with these women who badmouth you like that. And it confuses a man. So when you're arguing with your old lady, stay in your professor mode. And the second that it devolves into uh, throwing insults, into hurtling insults, you have to be the better, bigger person and cut that off. Cut it off. Separate each other. Don't talk again until you can get back into your rational mode. And if you can't, if you can't be rational when you argue with her, dump her. It's all just food for thought. Thanks for watching.